We begin CBS 2 News at 11 with breaking news. KTLA anchor has died. Chris Burroughs died today at a Glendale hospital. CBS 2's Tom Wade is live with details on the police investigation. Tom. And Sharon and Jeff, here's what we know at this point. Police are telling us that Burroughs was found inside the hotel just behind me here, the Days Inn in Glendale, at around 1.15 this afternoon. That's when they got the 911 call that someone was unresponsive in the room. As we take a look at some Sky 2 video here, we are told by police that Burroughs was in the room with another person, a man who was trying to resuscitate him, trying to give him CPR. That was not working. Paramedics rushed here and got him to the hospital as soon as they could. He died at the hospital. Of course, Burroughs, a very well recognized face in Los Angeles, very well known on the KTLA Morning News Desk from 2011. He started then and has had a very illustrious career here in Los Angeles. Just a few days ago on Christmas, he posted a video with himself and his family talking about some of the food that they were going to eat, talking about their Christmas trees. Uh, obviously, a heartbreaking situation there. He has a wife and a nine year old daughter. He has been at stations across California and across the country, and again, coming here in 2011. Police trying to be as sensitive as they could as this came out, and they discussed the circumstances under which they found him. That was something that we recognized right away because, uh, you know, everybody knows Chris. You know, and uh, so we knew that this was going to be something that was going to be a very sensitive matter. We're waiting for a toxicology report to come back from the, uh, the coroner's office. Uh, until uh, we get that, we won't be able to tell the, what the cause of death was. Uh, it is currently being uh, investigated as a possible overdose. We did ask what type of paraphernalia was found in the room, if any. They said right now that is part of the investigation. They would not release those details. They would also not release the details of the relationship between the man who was with Burroughs in the room when he was found. Reporting live in Glendale, I'm Tom Waite, CBS 2 News. All right, Tom, we certainly wish mm -hmm. the Burroughs family the best tonight. All right, also tonight, cold, gusty winds have been causing major problems all across Southern California, blowing down trees, knocking out power. The wind brought down at least two huge mm. trees, one in West Hollywood, the other one in North Hollywood. Yeah, it also caused power outages in several spots, affecting several thousand customers. We have team coverage, including CBS 2's Garth Kemp, who has been tracking the conditions all night long. But first, let's begin with Lori Perez, who's live in West Hollywood, where a tree fell on a house on Rosewood Avenue. Lori? Yeah, this was a really big one and very unexpected to the homeowner. Take a look at it. You can see the roots came right up out of the ground and this tree toppled over, of course, in the worst direction it could over the front yard and onto the roof of this home as the owner watched in disbelief. So I was standing here, I was getting ready to walk into my house and I heard this cracking. Juanita Sperry was right next to this tree when she heard a splintering noise, looked up and in a second says, and then the tree went timber and it fell. <laughs> and pretty did you much. run away? No, I just kind of stepped aside and looked at it. <laughs> in shock, basically. And high winds are likely to blame for what she says is the biggest, oldest tree on the block toppling over. Thankfully, no one was hurt. She says it doesn't look like the tree broke through, but she can see big cracks in the ceiling and side of her West Hollywood home. Ripping winds also likely tore down this massive tree in North Hollywood, knocking it into the street, tying up traffic near Tahunga and Magnolia. Meanwhile, parts of Culver City went into black as the winds knocked out power in neighborhoods and at intersections. SoCal Edison and LADWP crews have been busy handling multiple outages in and around LA, including 3,500 customers in Del Rey and nearly 5,000 customers in Marina Del Rey. Crews were able to restore power there by 7 p.m. And we did hear about an hour ago that crews were able to get power back on in Del Rey. However, there are several smaller uh, outages that remain throughout the city tonight. We are live in West Hollywood. I'm Lori Perez, CBS 2 News. All right, Lori, thanks very much. Now to Garth Kemp. So Garth's still blowing, and for how long? Yeah, well, I think we're going to extend things out a little longer, Jeff. Not a big surprise, but it's happening. Plus, it's cold out there. All the tans are saying good evening, everybody. These are extended wind advisories. Bigger area now, every place except for downtown L.A., 
to the LA County coast, but the Santa Monica Mountain Range, the valley, all the way out to the IE, down to the OC. That's where it is. The light blue you're seeing there for the San, for the Ventura County area, that would be a uh, frost advisory. Hard freeze warning, though, just north into the west of that. Piru all the way up to Ojai. Please make sure your pets are inside. We'll talk about the wind speeds, how long it's going to last, all of it coming up in just a little bit. Back to you guys. All right, Garth, and then ahead at 1115, find out what the conditions are going to be like for all of you traveling over the Cajon Pass tomorrow. Breaking news, scary sounds and eerie sights over New York City tonight. Flashing lights were spotted along the skyline, followed by a strange blue glow. It all started when a transformer blew at the Con Edison power plant in Queens. That explosion sparked multiple fires. The mayor says it caused scattered power outages, including uh, one at LaGuardia Airport. The airport closed temporarily for an inspection and issued a ground stop. The blast scared a lot of New Yorkers. Like a, a ball of fire, boom, and one boom, and then boom, 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 like one after another. And then I said to my husband, "We we have we have been attacked. This is a terrorist attack." Well, nobody got hurt, thank goodness, from in the explosion. Online, people joked aliens were invading, and that this was the beginning of Armageddon. Caught on camera, a rollover crash, and then two men stumbling from the scene. Question is, who are they? And where are they? That crash happened on Christmas morning in Downey. A Toyota RAV4 slammed into a white Toyota Camry parked mm -hmm. on the street on Gallatin Road. The Camry's owner heard the crash, checked her security camera, and then ran outside with her sister-in-law to try to help. She couldn't believe all the damage or how the men inside the RAV4 reacted. I was screaming. Is anyone there? Are you okay? Are you guys hurt? We try to keep them here, but... He said, I'm leaving. We told the first guy that came out to stay. We're like, no, you're staying. But he was so drunk. In the video, you could see that he's just drunk and stumbling on a car right here. At this point, it's not known if that car was stolen. Detectives spent the past 20 hours looking for clues in a Valley Glen apartment building where a mother and her 13-year-old son were found dead. Well, tonight, the coroner still hasn't released a cause of death. The husband and father made the deadly discovery last night. Neighbors say they were a hardworking family who've lived in their apartment for many years. A tragic end in the case of a missing Manhattan Beach woman who disappeared during a trip to LACMA. Tonight, her husband is speaking about the past two years he spent searching for his wife. CBS 2's Hermela Aragawi joins us live with that interview. Hermela? Hi, Sharon. As you can imagine, the last two years have been incredibly difficult for Kirk Moody. He spent more than 700 days wondering if his wife is alive, organizing searches for her, and unfortunately, tonight, that search is over. You know, she's my life partner. A husband heartbroken after learning that his wife is never coming back. A two-year search that ended yesterday when police called to tell him they had positively ID'd the remains of 55-year-old Nancy Pollockus. Definitely um, a little bit of shock um, and sadness. Pollockus went missing in October of 2016 while the two were visiting the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. Security video shows her walking out of the building and onto Wilshire Boulevard. She had recently been diagnosed with severe Alzheimer's. And we went to a restroom and I went to the men's room. She went to the women's room and I think she got finished earlier and came out. And normally she'd just wait for me and she apparently thought that maybe we'd left. And so she went, I'm guessing. I'm just purely guessing. I'm guessing that she left and went looking for us. Police say they found two sets of remains in a burned Sherman Oaks hillside that they eventually concluded were Nancy. One set in the spring of 2017 and another round this September. Kirk Moody says he feels like he lost his wife twice, the first time to Alzheimer's. It's really tough to watch somebody <clears throat> who you love so much and who's so smart um, start to not be able to function. According to the county coroner's office, the date of death is listed as March 2017, which begs the question, what happened to Nancy Pollockus in the six months prior? Reporting live in Manhattan Beach, Hermela Aragawi, CBS 2 News. All right, Hermela, thanks. New developments tonight in the murder of a Northern California police officer. The Stanislaus County Sheriff says the suspect, who you see here in store security video, is in the country illegally. The sheriff also says that they know who the guy is, but they're not releasing his name. Officer Ronil Singh was shot to death yesterday morning during a DUI traffic stop. 
Singh worked for the tiny, very small, 12-man Newman, California Police Department. This afternoon, President Trump tweeted about Singh's death by saying this, there is right now a full-scale manhunt going on in California for an illegal immigrant accused of shooting and killing a police officer during a traffic stop. Time to get tough on border security. Build the wall. Well, it looks like the government shutdown will drag on into the new year after the House and Senate adjourned until next week. The two chambers met for only a few minutes each since congressional leaders and rank-and-file members were almost entirely absent today. Republican Representative Mark Meadows, a close ally of President Trump, said that negotiations have not progressed. The shutdown is in its sixth day and affects roughly 25 percent of the federal government. The House and the Senate are expected to reconvene on Monday. Thousands of fish have died in Lake Elsinore. Why the holy fire could be to blame. Plus security video of a carjacking at a Home Depot. Why police say this might be connected to a big prison escape at San Quentin. A cold chill and gusty winds moving through the Inland Empire. What to expect tomorrow morning? Still ahead. And a large lightning strike is caught on camera as vehicles move down a busy highway. Also, here's a look at the guests tonight on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert.